Cowabunga, everyone! How is it going? We are live here on YouTube with a turtle-rific episode planned for you. Yes, we are continuing Animals A to Z with N is for Ninja Turtle. Yep, what is up with doing a Ninja Turtle? That's not a real animal, is it? Well, you know, when I started doing the animals A to Z, I knew that there would be a few animals, a few letters that would present a challenge for me to come up with a good animal. I didn't think N was going to be such a hard letter to do, but apparently it is. Yeah, so the letter N, I, my choices were the narwhal, which is a medium-sized whale that possesses a large tusk from a, uh, it's actually a canine tooth. And kids like the narwhal, I get requests for doing a narwhal balloon because it's like a whale unicorn. I didn't think that was uh, going to be something I could really do as a face paint design. Another uh, an animal is the newt. You know, that salamander-like creature. The Newfoundland, that dog. The night crawler for all you fishermen who like to go uh, fishing with real worms. Uh, the Nile crocodile. The numbat. I'm like, I've never even heard of a numbat. What is a numbat? Well, apparently it is a marsupial the size of a squirrel that eats termites. Another N animal was the nightingale, uh, the nyawa, a, uh, a spiral horned antelope that is native to South Africa, or the ninja turtle. Yeah, so I decided to go with the ninja turtle. They're just too cool to skip in the alphabet. And when I do a Ninja Turtle design, I always choose Mikey, Michelangelo, the orange Ninja Turtle. I just feel more connected to him than the other turtles. So what do you all know about the Ninja Turtles? Well, they are a fictional superhero uh, team living in the sewers of New York City. They uh, were mutinized through a radioactive accident, raised by a talking rat, and they are named for Renaissance painters, and they are all trained in the ancient art of ninjutsu. So yeah, I was thinking, yeah, what, what exactly is a ninja? What is this ninjutsu? And so I found out that, um, Ninjas are more a modern concept that uh, I think has been a little romanticized by the uh, non-Japanese. So the ninjutsu, or the ninja, uh, the ninjutsu, I guess, is the the skill. The ninja is the person. Ninjutsu is the strategy and tactics of unconventional guerrilla warfare and espionage um, practiced by the ninja. So it was your... I think uh, some of the things said that they were sort of mercenaries, they were hired assassins and things like that. And they were featured more prominently in legend and folklore. You know, they, they, they sort of have legendary abilities such as the ability to walk on water, control over natural elements, invisibility, and I think the pop culture just sort of picked up on them and said, hey, doesn't that sound cool? But from what I read, the, the the ninja was an agent of the feudal Japan, and their covert methods of waging war were deemed dishonorable and beneath the honor of the samurai. So they were 
often sort of lower class people who were doing it for the money as opposed to doing it for the cause they believed in. But we we go we know about the ninjas more or less because the uh, Western culture has adopted it and sort of def redefined it as something exciting and powerful, able to uh, entice children into watching cartoons and buying toys for Ninja Turtles. So, um, from what I read, the eeny meeny miny mo. The dictionaries often trace the first popular use of the word ninja to a book that was written by Ian Fleming, the author of the James Bond series. So yeah, I guess he learned about the ninja and decided to use it in his books and stories. So back to the Ninja Turtles. There were a pair of comic book artists, Kevin Eastman and Peter L L Laird, uh, who were living in Massachusetts when they came up with the idea of the Ninja Turtles in November 1983. So I, they were working on another comic book series that they had designed, and I guess they got bored, and one evening... Eastman drew a turtle standing on its hind legs. Um, yeah, standing on, wearing a mask with nunchucks strapped to its arms. And according to their story, they said that like the idea of something known to be a slow creature like a turtle, but Mixing it with something that is swift and fast, like a ninja that's stealthy and can attack. Um, so it, it was like a contrast of the slow turtle and the speed that they, they liked that juxtaposition. So they spent the evening working on it and eventually created four turtles. And Eastman had given them the name Ninja Turtles. So the, the two comic book artists, they had a company that they started themselves, Mirage Studios. And the, from, for the story, the, the name Mirage is more or less because they really didn't have a studio. It was all a mirage. They were just working out of a, a house or a basement, a garage, or wherever they were working out of. And they designed the Ninja Turtle comic book, printed up 3,000 copies uh, using whatever money they could have, uh, find or borrow from family. And so they had 3,000 comics of the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And they, they used a little of their leftover money to buy an ad in Comic Buyer's Guide magazine, an industry publication. And apparently that worked for them, that uh, enough comic distributors and buyers saw their, their ad and were intrigued by the concept and bought up the 3,000 copies that they had printed. And the comic was really just meant to be a one-off that they were working on a different series. But after that success, they... Uh, they, they issued uh, number two in the series in January 1985. Apparently, like the, they looked at Japanese names for the Ninja Turtles, but they just didn't think any of them sounded right or appealed to their, to their senses or audience. And eventually, they went with the names of four Renaissance artists, and again, thinking that the, that was just sort of an odd thing, um, adopting another culture's names. 
the I never I I watched some of the Ninja Turtle, but I wasn't a huge fan. Apparently, they are brother turtles, uh, all from the same family. In the original comic books uh, that they 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 wrote and drew, all of the turtles had a red mask. And the main way that you could tell them apart was by which weapon they were holding. Uh, each one had a different weapon. It, it, the original comics were sort of a PG-13. They would cuss, they would fight, they'd spill blood. But they were approached by a toy company that wanted to create some toys that they could sell to seven, eight-year-olds and have a cartoon series based on the Ninja Turtles. So they worked with uh, the company to sort of reimagine the turtles a little bit softer, friendlier. And one of the changes they did was each turtle got a different color mask. Uh, all of their outfits, they have like a belt that has uh, M or D or R. So yeah, their, their initials on their outfits. So you can sort of tell which turtle is which by by looking at the color of the mask and their their outfit and which letter is on their their uniform uh, and they also sort of became more wise cracking they became obsessed with pizza and their catchphrase of turtle power and cowabunga those were both created for the cartoon series and to sell the toys Oh, and I guess I didn't mention the four names of the turtles. Well, there is Leonardo. He is the eldest of the turtles. He wears a blue mask in the cartoons. And he is, of course, named after Leonardo da Vinci. Then there is Raphael. He is the second oldest. And they describe him as an anti-hero. Um... I guess he just so he, he's more what he does isn't really because he's trying to do good he's just having fun um, yeah just like speeding up on people and whatnot and he wears the red mask now I always remember Raphael and red both start with R Donatello seems to be the turtle that most people will forget if I ask him to name all the turtles well he is the third in line the third oldest uh, they describe him as the scientist, the inventor, the, the engineer, the technical genius. He relies more on gadgets over his actual combat skills, and he wears the purple mask. And then, of course, there is my favorite, Michelangelo. He is the youngest. He is the free spirit, goofy, mischievous jokester of the group. Um, he is known for his love of pizza and his kind-hearted nature. And, of course, he's wearing the orange mask. Yep, yeah, so those are the Ninja Turtles. You know, I, I was looking. Um, the cartoon series got picked up in uh, Europe, in England, and other places. And, apparently, some of the European standards for cartoon violence are a little bit more strict than the United States, so they had to cut some of the scenes. And like they said, that the um, I think it was the nunchucks um, are banned in England, so they can't show any of the scenes of the turtles using nunchucks. So yes, yeah, so they had to sort of cut a lot of it out. Yeah, I was reading an uh, interview with the two guys who created. Um, Eastman and Liard, and they, I guess, said that they wish that they had taken more time in deciding to uh, go with the comic book. That they, they thought that uh, they they liked their original concept of a little grittier, a little older, a little cruder. That the the softened version wasn't quite their style, but you know, I. I I would bet that they've made a fair amount of money off the Ninja Turtles, so all in all, the success of the Turtle is probably from the cartoon series and everything, the toys and things that that spawned, uh, more so than just the original comic book would have been on its own, so if they had not 
compromise for the cartoons. We might not really know who the Ninja Turtles are, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say what would have happened 30 years ago if things had been differently. So this is my Ninja Turtle balloon. Uh, I didn't give him a weapon, but that is what we have for today. So yeah, so that was our N is for Ninja Turtle. So until next time, see you later. Alligator, after a while, Crocodile, thanks for watching.